you read the title correctly. I was robbed and hospitalized in Chile. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode here at Tourist to Local. Still to date, this is one of my favorite stories to tell because it is the story where I have had probably the roughest time while traveling. Literally the worst of the worst could have happened to me, and I'd like to share it with you guys just so you can know how to not be stupid like I was. But before I get into my little story, make sure you guys subscribe down below. I post twice a week travel tips, city guides, and fun little stories like this, so you guys are really gonna like this account. Also make sure you hit the bell so you never miss a video. So basically back in 2014 I think it was I was studying in Chile in Viña del Mar on a little exchange program. I had just arrived to the country and I was so so excited to start exploring um, but first I had to get settled into my classes. During my time there I was attending a university with Chilean students which was so cool and living with a host family. I would take a bus and I, my classes were generally in the afternoon so I would usually have time to go explore around the city beforehand go to a coffee shop etc so on this particular day uh, it was about like my fifth day there in Chile and I decided to go to a coffee shop to do some of my homework before class and while I was doing that I decided to take out $400 for the month um, whatever it was in Chilean pesos though as well as bring my laptop so I'd be able to do my homework. So imagine me, stupid Juliana, walking around with a backpack with all of her valuables in it. All the credit cards, all her money she just took out, her laptop, her iPhone, everything. And that's where I basically set myself up for failure. So what had happened was I just finished hanging out at the coffee shop and it was time to go to class. So I went to my bus stop. It was in the middle of a really busy area, really well lit, um, and a lot of locals around. I had set down my backpack thinking there's so many people around and no way nothing bad could happen. Everyone around me seems so nice after all. Well. I was wrong. Before I knew it, a kid had run by and snatched my backpack and started running in the other direction. I, I don't know how old he was, but he was definitely around high school age and he was running down the block with all of my things and my first instinct was to chase him. So I'm chasing this kid, right? And that's probably the stupidest thing I could have done because you should never chase someone who steals things from you because what if they have a gun or a knife? or worse. So, um, yeah, not my smartest, most shiniest moment, but I continued to chase him in my cowboy boots with my long legs, looking like an idiot running down this boulevard in Chile. <laughs> there were so many people around too, and that's what the worst part was. I kept shouting, ladron, ladron, which means thief in Spanish. Uh, no one batted an eyelash. They all just kind of looked at me funny and watched me look like an idiot. So I'm running and running and no one's helping stop this kid and I kind of lost track of him, I didn't know where he was. And then a car pulls over to the side and says he got onto that bus. I don't know if these people were with the kid and were trying to distract me or if they are really trying to help me. I think they were. But anyway, there was a lot of buses around um, and I wasn't sure which one he got on. So I got on the first one and he wasn't there. I looked like an idiot. I was like, there's a thief on this bus, like someone stole my backpack. And everyone just like looked at me like, what are you, what is this girl talking about? So I, by that point, the other buses had taken off and he was gone with all of my stuff. I was panicked. My heart was racing. I was crying and I was so scared. Um, but I went to class anyway, which is really weird, and I deactivated all of my cards from my friend's laptops, my friends who I just met like five days before, and um, they were really, really helpful for that reason. Uh, when I went home to my host family, they were shocked, they were so scared, and they immediately called the police to um, help investigate the scene. Uh, clearly there wasn't much that they could do. The city I'm in is so big, there's so many different schools, and it was really hard to remember how to identify the kids, so um, I didn't really get anything back, which kind of sucked. Yeah, so I had lost everything and I was so sad. How could I be so stupid during my first few days here in Chile? But anyway, I carried on, and about three days later I started to get extremely sick. At this point I was like borrowing money from friends, my parents were wiring me money, we figured that out super quick using a um, wiring money system, I think it was called Ola, I'm not sure, but it was fantastic and it was a lifesaver. 
Um, but I got really sick and I knew I needed to go to the doctor. I went to the doctor and I had a fever at this point and I couldn't really describe my symptoms. My throat hurt like crazy. I felt so lethargic. Um, but how do you say that in Spanish when you're learning all that? Uh, and also I didn't have a phone to look up how to say those things in Spanish. So, or a translator. My um, host family wasn't able to come with me to the doctor and they didn't speak English anyway. So uh, it was really, really a bad situation. So the doctor prescribed to me your basic, um, how do you call Dayquil and some ibuprofen and I looked at it and I knew that wouldn't help me with what was going on but anyway I took it went home and the next day I felt even worse terrible I could hardly focus I was delirious I was so hot um, and I just felt like I'm going to die <laughs> I felt awful so I told my host family and they were so worried um, and they brought me to the doctor again and they took my temperature and it was way too high so they had to hospitalize me what i had never been hospitalized i would never had an iv i've never done any of that and to do it in a foreign country where the hospital is literally there is no rooms it's just curtains between people i was so scared and i didn't know how to tell my parents what was going on either luckily i had a chilean phone so i called um my university's program and then they contacted my parents and they were so freaked out and it was just so so scary um, and I also didn't really have Wi-Fi in the hospital to contact them and I also didn't have money to pay for the whole thing I mean I had a little bit but it was like it wasn't enough um, so I had to rely on my friends that I had just made and my host family to help pay for it and like loan me money in the meantime I was so scared I remember just being hooked up to the IV and not even worried like for my life but worried like how am I gonna pay this so that was terrifying I was there for a few hours and eventually um, I went through a few IVs and they uh, figured out a treatment for me I don't even remember what it was I think it was some sort of antibiotic but I still like felt really bad for the whole week um, a few days later I went to the hospital to get um, blood tests and the problem was they like told me what was wrong and I I don't know what they said I I think it was mono but I don't know I'm not quite sure like after that I was like fine I think but still don't really know it was either like mono or rheumatic fever which is like a pioneer's disease so could be either one who knows <laughs> and uh so yeah but none of my other friends got mono so I don't I don't think it was that but anyway, it was literally the worst week of my life. I remember I was so sad and so just like, what on earth have I got myself into? This is the worst week ever. First I'm robbed, then I'm hospitalized. Like, what else could go wrong? Uh, and luckily from there, everything was much better. I was so, so happy to finally enjoy Chilean life. I had experienced the lowest of lows and it could only get better from there. And during my time at home when I couldn't go to school, I started making my tours to local blog which doesn't exist anymore but at the time it was like my passion and that's what actually got me into making YouTube I loved like sharing travel tips and stuff so uh, in a weird way that whole quinky dink that whole situation led me to do YouTube so who knows maybe it was meant to happen but that is my travel story for today I hope you guys liked it if you want more travel stories I have a million and I'd love to share them with you guys and that's my story guys if you liked it make sure you leave a thumbs up and a comment down below of any crazy stories that you have experienced on the road I love to hear these it's my favorite so um, let's start a conversation also we can continue that conversation on Instagram where I post all my photos with little anecdotes as well uh, you guys will really like that and I love to see what you guys are doing and if you like this video make sure you check out these I picked them out because I think you'll really like them if you like this video and also hit my face over here to subscribe easy way to do it just right here and then also hit that bell down below to get notifications because you don't want to miss this guys bye guys now go out there and make the world your neighborhood see ya